Chapter 11 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Ching Ching, Why Are Your Ears Red? Translator Hen Yi Translations Editor Hen Yi Translations Madame Xie's words made Feng Jianning's expression indescribable. It was as if knives were stabbing her everywhere. I don't know. This is my aunt's research. She's usually in her own lab, but when we bring it back this time, our family will study it. Feng Qin smiled. That's a pity. I don't need to study it to know. What? Feng Jianning was stunned. What was this woman talking about? How could she know what Feng Yiru had done before she died? That without waiting for Feng Jianning to continue, Feng Qin no longer had the patience to continue talking to her, she threw shadow to the ground. The bottle shattered into pieces and the entire auction hall was filled with a strong fragrance. Everyone was in an uproar. Seeing shadow shattered, Feng Jianning's face turned ashen. Her heart was broken. Just as there was a commotion, Feng Qin sprinkled some unknown powder on the perfume on the ground. The smell of shadow immediately changed. Although they had only met once, Feng Qing still remembered what Feng Yiru had said when she had broken off all ties with the Feng family. Even if I, Feng Yiru, die, I will not leave anything for the Feng family. Feng Qing didn't mind helping her. The shadow had changed its taste. Feng Jianning was standing at the side. She was stimulated by both her spirit and fragrance and actually had hallucinations. She saw herself being kicked out of the Feng family, Feng Qin dug out her eyes and threw her to a fat old man with yellow teeth. She had experienced all the injustice and hardships Feng Qin had experienced. Feng Jianning couldn't help but cry out loudly. She ran out in a panic and couldn't care about anything else. The scene was instantly in chaos. Feng Qin ignored them and left through the VIP passageway with her bodyguards. After leaving the auction house, Feng Qin went straight to the Capital International Hotel because there were still people waiting for her. At the Capital International Hotel, Ji Yunchen, who was dressed in a white suit, was anxiously looking back and forth at the hotel entrance, waiting for that little ancestor. Finally, Ji Yunchen saw the light. The little ancestor's car stopped at the entrance and he hurriedly went to open the door. Feng Qin got out of the car. She had already taken off her hat and sunglasses, revealing a pair of unfocused eyes. Her face was like peach blossoms brushing against her face, making one's heart itch. For the past three years, Feng Qing had tried all sorts of methods to restore her vision, but it had never recovered. She could only see a hazy shadow under the strong light now. She didn't know what poison Feng Jianning had used to aggravate her condition. Feng Qin even thought of opening her skull to get rid of the blood clot, but Xie Johan stopped her. After all, the risk was too great. What happened to Johan? Through the sound of breathing, Feng Qin could accurately determine that the person who opened the car door was Ji Yunchen. My little ancestor, you've finally arrived. Your Jiu was drugged by Mr. Qingyi. Do you think that Mr. Qingyi is crazy? He came up with such a drug for no reason. What kind of drug did he use to bring disaster to the country? Is he crazy? Ji Yunchen gritted his teeth as he spoke, his heart filled with hatred. After hearing Ji Yunchen's words, Feng Qin almost stumbled. Luckily, Xie Qi reacted quickly and supported her. A month ago, Someone gave Mr. Qingyi a hundred million yuan to customize a colorless and odorless aphrodisiac because she wanted to give it to an extremely powerful person. That person was very vigilant and could only rely on external influences to spread it to him. This drug only had one effect, and that was to make the drugged person burn with desire and have to find someone to make out with. No one knew that, Mr. Qingyi, was actually just a fake persona created by Feng Qing on the internet. Feng Qing made the medicine that the person wanted, then took the money and handed over the goods, not taking this matter to heart. However, that person did not say that she would give it to Xie Johan. When Ji Yunchen saw that Feng Qing almost fell, he thought that she was anxious and quickly helped her to continue walking. 
As they walked, he gritted his teeth and scolded, don't worry, that woman who dared to drug Ninth Master has already been dealt with. She was the one who said that she spent a huge sum of money to buy it from that old pervert, Mr. Chingy. I say, that Mr. Chingy is very likely related to a dark organization. They've been jumping around the Ninth Master all these years, assassinating, killing, poisoning, and scheming against each other. What haven't they tried? Now, they've contacted that pervert, Mr. Ching Yi. They're starting to use their trump cards. Eh. Ching Ching, why are your ears so red? Fong Ching. Chapter 12 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Tricked Again Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations Fong Ching was a little embarrassed. If Ji Yunchen knew that the old pervert he was talking about was her, he would understand why her ears turned red. What kind of crappy matter was this? It was too embarrassing. As for the dark organization that Ji Yunchen was talking about, it was not a code name. Its name was a dark organization. It was an organization that wandered outside the law and order. As long as you could afford it, it could help you complete the task that you entrusted to them. No one knew how many years they had existed or who had built them. None of the orders they had taken had failed. They had been undefeated for many years. It was only when they met Sied Johan that the undefeated legend was broken. Now, Sied Johan was ranked first among all the bounties offered by a dark organization. He's inside. You, be careful. I don't have any instructions for you. I'll give you this. Good luck, and don't make any mistakes. Ji Yunchen brought Feng Qing all the way to Xie Johan's room. He took out the condoms he had prepared and placed them in Feng Qing's hands. Although Ji Yunchen's words were short, there was a lot of information. Feng Qing was confused. But before Feng Qing could ask anything else, she was pushed into the suite. The room was as bright as day. Under the strong light, Feng Qing could feel clusters of shadows in front of her. With her exceptional hearing ability, she could hear the wind and identify her position. Even in an unfamiliar environment, Feng Qing could move freely. She was no longer the little blind girl who needed to sense directions barefooted. Xie Johan. Feng Qing walked towards the bathroom based on her hearing. There was the sound of water, breathing, and Xie Johan's heartbeat. Without waiting for Feng Qing to push the door open, the bathroom door was suddenly opened from the inside. A man drenched from head to toe walked out. His gaze was malicious, like an eagle staring at its prey with a hint of bloodlust. How are you? Are you okay? Feng Qing felt the person in front of her and raised her hand to accurately touch his face. She knew that he was acting up again and was extremely irritable. And when she touched him, his entire body tensed up. Where's Ji Yunchen? Why didn't he, as a doctor, come in and let you come in instead? Get out now. Xie Johan pulled down Feng Qing's hand and pushed her away, his voice hoarse. He can't solve Mr. Qingyi's problem. Otherwise, he wouldn't have called me here in a hurry. Feng Qing felt very guilty when she said this. She was the one who came up with this medicine, so she naturally knew how to cure it. However, since Xie Johan was so vigilant, how could she not be discovered and cure him? Or should she just use the little thing Ji Yunchen gave her? Ha! Hearing Mr. Qingyi's name, Xie Johan gritted his teeth. He would definitely catch Mr. Qingyi and teach him a lesson. Feng Qing could hear Xie Johan's restrained breathing beside her ear. She knew that he must be feeling very uncomfortable. After all, she was the one who had developed the medicine. Feng Qing was very clear about the effects. After thinking for a while, Feng Qing decided to do something big tonight. She passed the condom to Xie Johan. Here. Ji Yunchen said not to make mistakes. Xie Johan was caught off guard. When he saw the thing in his hand, he almost gasped. He pinched Feng Qing's neck and said in a low and hoarse voice, Do you know what this is? How dare you give it to me? 
Feng Qing mumbled shyly, I'm not a child, I'm already twenty. With that, she accurately kissed Xie Johan's lips. Xie Johan's tensed body instantly tensed up. Morning. To Feng Qing, the difference between day and night was that there were more shadows. However, she could clearly feel the change in temperature. Lying in Xie Johan's embrace, she could feel his breath and heartbeat at a close distance. Feng Qing was especially at ease as she caressed his face from his chest. The biggest regret of not being able to see was that she could not see Xie Johan's face properly even though she had touched his face countless times. Everyone said that he was very good dot looking and scary. Those who had seen him before did not dare to look into his eyes as they were bloodthirsty and malicious, as though they were staring at their prey. Being stared at by him would not escape his grasp. It was just that this kind of person also had his tender feelings. He still couldn't bear to part with her. Xie Johan slowly opened his eyes. As he looked at the little girl in his arms caressing his face inch by inch, the desire in his heart grew even stronger. This feeling was as if he had fallen into a calamity again. Dut, get up and wash up. Let's prepare for school today. Xie Johan took a deep breath, stretched out his long arms, and lifted the little girl from his arms. She could no longer lie down. Mm. What are you talking about? Feng Qing was a little stunned. She was still immersed in feeling Xie Johan's appearance and marveling at their strong relationship. In the next second, this man had already woken up and carried her. When did this man wake up? He was really bullying her for being blind and not telling her when she woke up. I said you're going to the Capital University to report for school tomorrow. As Xie Johan spoke, he carried Feng Qing to the bathroom and placed the little girl on the sink. He washed her face and brushed her teeth like an old father. The young lady naturally accepted the man's care and obediently brushed her teeth. Those who didn't know better would think that she couldn't take care of herself. Chapter 13 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The Bird with Broken Wings Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations Initially, Xie Johan really couldn't do this with his blood-tainted hands. However, he despised the servants for being clumsy and took on this job himself. He took on this job for three years and was used to it. Even though he knew that Feng Qing could do it herself, Xie Johan did not let go. As long as he got close to her, his heart would calm down. Why aren't you saying anything? I know you don't want to go, and you haven't missed out on anything that your peers have been learning all these years, but that's not enough. You should interact more with your peers, make some friends, and not those teachers I've found. I've already spoken to the principal of the Capital University. With a new identity, it won't attract any attention and no one will dare to bully you. Don't worry. Xie Johan rubbed Feng Qing's head, his eyes filled with tenderness. For the past three years, Feng Qing had been following him around through thick and thin. He didn't have any friends, and Feng Qing had never rejected him either. Even though she was blind, he couldn't deny that he was indeed selfish at the start. He was using her to suppress his temper, but as time passed, feelings grew. She was already the closest person to him. As Feng Qin grew older, she had missed out on too many things. Xie Johan didn't want Feng Qin to reject contact with this world because of her eyes. He knew that Feng Qin was actually willing. Otherwise, when he invited teachers one by one, she had never really rejected him. Regardless of whether it was zither, chess, calligraphy, or other things, all the teachers told him that if Feng Qing wasn't blind, she would definitely have great accomplishments. Therefore, Xie Johan knew that Feng Qing was a bird with broken wings. She still looked forward to flying again. Feng Qing lowered her head, feeling a little down. How could she not want to stand on campus like a normal person? When she was 17 years old, her teacher told her that with her grades, she would definitely be able to get into the top university in the capital city. However, it was also in that year that she found her biological parents and in return, came back with blindness. The next morning, 
Feng Qing rejected Xie Johan's offer to send her to school personally. Since she had said that she wanted to experience it, she would do it properly. In Feng Qing's heart, she was only a 20.year.old girl. I'll take March with me. Don't worry. March was Feng Qing's guide dog. She was a 2.year.old Labrador. It was a male and was docile and obedient. Ji Yunchen bought him for Feng Qing. It had to be said that Ji Yunchen was quite serious at times. Follow him. Remember what I said. Watching the little girl leave with March, Xie Johan waved his hand. Xie Qi received his orders and secretly followed Feng Qing with his men. Xie Qi had always known that this little ancestor was the only one at Ninth Master's place. TSK TSK. Xie Johan, she's just going to school. It's not a big deal. Look at how worried you are. Ji Yunchen leaned on the sofa and teased Xie Johan. Xie Johan rolled his eyes at him and threw the little thing from that night onto Ji Yunchen. I haven't settled the score with you yet. How dare you come today? Me. You're useless. I've already reminded her not to make mistakes, you guys, Ji Yunchen caught the little thing. Halfway through his words, he suddenly changed his tone. You didn't hold it in, did you? Xie Johan ignored him and went upstairs. Dot however, Ji Yunchen did not give up. He continued nagging, I say, Ninth Master, what you've been drugged with is no ordinary aphrodisiac. Did you hold it in for the whole night? Are you still a virgin at 25 years old? As a man and a doctor, I sincerely say that I can't hold it in. It'll hurt my body. As Ji Yunchen spoke, he saw Xie Johan sitting in front of his desk. There were a few red marks on his collar. It turned out, they had done the deed, but they had not taken any safety measures. Ninth Master Su Yu stood at the door of the study room and waited for instructions, interrupting Ji Yunchen's nagging. The chairman of Ding Corporation already knows that you've dealt with his daughter. He's currently terminating his business with the Xie family. He even said that he wants you to lose your footing in the business world and kill you. Ha! Xie Jiu scoffed coldly. Go public with what his precious daughter did and see who will kill who. This matter isn't important. Just do as you see fit. How is the godly doctor? Xie Johan did not care about the Ding Corporation at all. Upon hearing Xie Johan's question, Su Yu, who was already trembling, broke out in cold sweat. He was afraid of asking this question now. I'm sorry, Ninth Master. Other than knowing that the godly doctor is related to a dark organization, we can't find anything else. We, Xie Johan didn't want to listen to Su Yu anymore. He directly said, Send word that the Xie family will do anything to deal with them until they hand over the godly doctor. Chapter 14 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Protection in the Dark Translator. Henyi Translations Editor. Henyi Translations The miracle doctor that Xie Johan was looking for wasn't the pharmaceutical expert Mr. Chingyi, but a medical expert who was related to a dark organization. It was said that he had the ability to revive the dead. Xie Johan had been looking for him, but he couldn't find him. After finding out that the miracle doctor was related to a dark organization, he actually wanted to pressure the other party to find the miracle doctor. Only he, Xie Johan, could think of such an unconstrained method. On the noisy street, Feng Qin led March to the bus stop. March, you have to remember that we have to walk like this every day. Feng Qin caressed March's head. The Labrador was very smart and was a professional guide dog, so it naturally remembered her. Moreover, Xie Johan had already brought people to let March familiarize herself with the environment. March knew where to go and which car to take with Feng Qin. The bus drove over slowly. March, who was about to lie down, got up instantly. When the bus stopped, he nudged Feng Qin's legs with his head. The passengers went down first and then up. Just as Feng Qing and March stepped onto the steps, the first row of passengers shouted. 
Ayo. How can such a big dog be on a bus? Since you're blind, don't come out if it's so inconvenient. I wonder if this dog is sick, exactly. What happens when a dog bites a child, the passengers were conflicted. This Labrador was more than a meter long, and it was being held by a blind girl. She couldn't see. What if she couldn't hold it and bit them? March is a guiding dog. She won't bite, nor is she sick. Feng Qing's retort was quickly drowned out by the noisy crowd. Stop arguing. The driver shouted loudly to stop the passengers, can everyone be more civil? A guide dog can take a bus. If anyone has any objections, go down and take a taxi. Little girl, lead your friend up the bus and let him take you to an empty seat. The driver didn't want to say anything else. He just sighed at how people nowadays were indifferent. Thank you, uncle. Feng Qing got into the car with a smile. There were not many people in the car. After Feng Qing sat down, the driver started the bus. Meanwhile, outside the car, seeing that Feng Qing had really left on the bus alone, Xie Qi and the rest hurriedly followed behind. Feng Qing sat by the window and took out the cell phone that Xie Johan had specially customized for her. Feng Qing had done a lot of things with it. After unlocking it skillfully, she dialed a special number. The other end picked up very quickly. It was a boy's voice. My dear sister, you finally remembered me. I have some interesting news to report. The other party was the only person in a dark organization who knew Feng Qing's identity. His code name was Qing Air because he was brought in by Feng Qing. Speak. The corners of Feng Qing's mouth curved up. Even though she was wearing a hat and couldn't see her entire face, it still made people think that this girl was really good. Looking. Unfortunately, she was blind. That famous Ye Johan from the capital offered 10 billion to buy the news of the godly doctor and even threatened us to hand over Mr. Chingy. He also knows that we won't hand over Mr. Chingy, but he's just trying to disgust us. He's giving us big money while causing trouble. Sis, aren't you playing with fire a little too much? I really want to see how Xie Johan will react if he finds out that Mr. Chingy is you. There was a hint of schadenfreude in Qing Air's tone. It couldn't be helped. That old man was his love rival after all. He couldn't beat him, so he could only laugh at him. You're making me so excited. Give him the news, split the money by twenty and eighty. Feng Qing hung up the phone after saying that, a smile on her lips. Behind her right, two men were whispering. Is that girl really blind? She has a good figure and looks good. I think so. I saw her doing everything by touching. There's also the guide dog. She must be rich. Shall we go and get it? After discussing, the two men left their seats and walked towards Feng Qing. Feng Qing put away her phone and was about to warm up when a familiar voice suddenly sounded behind her. What are you two doing? I heard everything. The man's cold voice made Feng Qing freeze. Little brat, are you trying to meddle in other people's business? Hurry up and get lost, or else I'll teach you a lesson. The two of them threatened the young man as they took out knives from their pockets and gestured at him. To them, this young man was dressed simply. He was poor and thin. His accent was foreign and he wore a pair of dull glasses. He looked like a pushover. However, they did not expect that the young man was not afraid of the threat of the knife. Instead, he stood in front of Feng Qing and swung the knife away. Then he kicked one of the men to the ground and knocked the other down with a punch. Screams were heard, and the driver hurriedly braked. Get lost, don't let me see you again. The young man shouted and the two hoodlums ran out of the bus's window. Chapter 15 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Interesting University Life Translator. Henyi Translations Editor. Henyi Translations Seeing that Feng Qing was fine, the driver turned around and continued driving. He looked at the young man through the rearview mirror. 
he did not seem to have seen it wrongly. There was a murderous look in the thin man's eyes. The young man retracted his aura and turned around carefully to look at the confused girl. He called out, Ching Ching. Feng Ching took off her sunglasses. There was no light in her eyes, but the corners of her mouth were curled into a smile. It came from the bottom of her heart. Brother Ming Qian. Su Ming Qian was an older brother she knew in the mountains. It's me, Ching Ching, but what happened to your eyes? Su Ming Qian was initially a little uncertain, but when he saw the girl take off her sunglasses, he was certain. However, those eyes. There's an accident. I can't see anything. Feng Qing answered calmly. Su Mingqian clenched his fists tightly, his heart stifled. In the blink of an eye, it had only been three years since they last met. How did that little girl, who had always had a glimmer in her eyes, become like this? He reached out and wanted to touch her head like before. He remembered that Qingqing was already twenty years old and was no longer a young girl. He could not be like before. It had been more than three years since they last met and everything was unfamiliar yet familiar. Su Mingqian did not dare to touch her. The situation in the bus had already reached Xie Jiuhan. Oh, March tipped her head back and arched into Su Mingqian. March's bulk arched a safe distance between them. The incompetent poop dot picker in his family had said that any male had to stay away from his little master's safe distance. Feng Qing patted its head to calm it down. Then, she asked, Brother Ming Qian, what a coincidence. It's been three years since we last met. You're already in university, right? Which university? Feng Qing remembered that Su Ming Qian's grades were very good. She knew that he had always wanted to spread the flute to the entire world. It was just that these musical instruments were a little ancient and modern people rarely learned them. Hence, Su Mingxian's path was destined to be difficult. I'm majoring in music. Capital University has a couple of poor special admissions every year. I'm lucky to get in. How about you? How are you doing now? Su Mingxian was a little embarrassed. He didn't boast that he had gotten into the best university. He just felt a little embarrassed in front of Feng Qin. When they were young, they had agreed to get into the best university together and change their lives with their families. When he saw her eyes, Su Mingqian felt very uncomfortable. That's such a coincidence. Our childhood wishes came true. Me too, Feng Qin briefly explained her situation. After all, they were in the same school and even got special admission. They were really faded. By the way, how is Grandpa Su now? Feng Qin asked. The old man is doing well. Ever since he found out that I brought the long flute out of the mountains, he could eat three big bowls of rice for a meal. He came with me. Su Mingqian felt a slight headache at the thought of the old imp at home. It was as if he was competing with him. If not for Su Mingqian's insistence, the old man would still be living in the mountains. As soon as he finished speaking, Su Mingqian recalled what Feng Qing had said about special admissions. He was somewhat puzzled. He remembered that Feng Qing had been taken away by her rich parents. How did it become a special admission? The number one university in the capital's special admission only had poor students. However, before Su Mingqian could ask any questions, they arrived at their destination. The two entered the school together. Although they went in different directions, Su Mingqian followed behind Feng Qing worriedly. After taking a few steps, Feng Qing turned around and said, Brother Ming Qian, you go first. I can take care of myself. Besides, there's still March. Feng Qing knew that Xie Johan's men were on the way. If Su Mingqian continued to follow her, the old vinegar tank at home would definitely be unhappy. Su Mingqian thought that it would hurt her pride if he continued to follow her, so he watched Feng Qing until she was out of sight before he went back to his way. After the admission was completed, Feng Qing was led by a guide to familiarize herself with the school environment. When she passed by a corridor, 
Feng Qing's ears suddenly twitched. From the clamor around her, she recognized Feng Jianning's voice. At this moment, Feng Jianning was being flattered by a few of her younger ladies and was very pleased with herself. This is too sweet. Jianning, young master Chao even bitted a limited edition Hermes platinum bag for you. He treats you really well, he spent so much money to buy you a bag. This relationship is really enviable. Childhood sweethearts are really extraordinary, be no calm as the little lady praised, she curled her lips disdainfully in a corner where Feng Jianning couldn't see. Even though Feng Jianning didn't manage to win anything at the auction, this didn't stop her from bragging in front of others. After all, the auction wasn't broadcasted live, so they naturally didn't know how Feng Jianning crawled out that night. Feng Jianning listened to the compliments and was grinning from ear to ear when she suddenly saw Feng Qing standing at the staircase. Chapter 16 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. A blind freshman from the Music Academy. Translator. Henyi Translations Editor. Henyi Translations Feng Qing's long hair blew gently. Her fair skin, pink lips, and even her soulless eyes were incomparably beautiful. At this moment, Feng Jianning was even more shocked than when she first met Feng Qing three years ago. At that time, looking at the immature Feng Qing, Feng Jianning's intuition told her that she absolutely couldn't let this woman come back. She would definitely take everything away from her. Feng Jianning felt that everything before her eyes was an illusion. Could it be that Feng Yiru's perfume was still effective? She could see ghosts in broad daylight. With a scream that caught her off guard, Feng Jianning was just like Feng Qing back then. She missed her footing and rolled down the stairs. Tang Pan, who was still flattering Feng Jianning just now, was shocked by this sudden accident. She indeed looked down on Feng Jianning, but she couldn't show it on her face. She couldn't afford to offend the Feng family in Jiangdu. Seeing Feng Jianning fall, Tang Pan hurriedly ran down to help Feng Jianning up. However, when she was holding Feng Jianning's hand, she wasn't careful at all. Wherever Feng Jianning hurt, she would touch it. She raised her hand and pressed it on Feng Jianning's forehead that had been injured by the stairs. Feng Jianning let out another scream. Tang Pan shouted exaggeratedly, Ah! Jianning, are you in a lot of pain? Bear with it, you're bleeding. I'll help you stop the bleeding. Ah! I'm bleeding. Hurry and bring me to the infirmary. As Feng Jianning shouted, she raised her eyes to look at the person who had appeared just now. However, there was already no trace of her in the stairwell. Feng Jianning only took it as an illusion and hurriedly rushed towards the infirmary. The change in Feng Jianning's side didn't even cause any emotional fluctuations to Feng Qing because Feng Qing had left the scene. The guide had just received news that the dean wanted to see Feng Qing, so she brought Feng Qing to the dean's office. The guide was a young lady who had just graduated a year ago. Her surname was Bai. The moment she reached the office building, her phone rang. What? I'll be right there. Don't panic, instructor Bai put down the phone and looked at Feng Qing awkwardly. Student Feng Qing, Something happened to the student who will deliver the speech as the representative of the freshman this afternoon. This is very important. I have to go take a look. You. What should we do? The director still wants to see you. Actually, instructor Bai wanted Feng Qing to go alone, but she also knew that it wasn't convenient for Feng Qing. However, she knew which side was more important, but looking at Feng Qing, she really couldn't open her mouth. Okay, I understand. Instructor Bai, you can go over. I can go by myself. Feng Qing could sense the other party's anxiety, so she did not force her. It was daytime now, and under the strong light, she could sense the shadows. Although it was slower, she could still distinguish them. Can you really do it yourself? Instructor Bai was a little grateful for Feng Qing's tactfulness, but she was still a little worried. She wanted to find someone to guide Feng Qing. 
as they were all freshmen, Instructor Bai had only met them a few times during the military training and had yet to recognize them all. Just as Instructor Bai was feeling a little troubled, a boy came down from the office building. Instructor Bai's eyes instantly lit up. She shouted, Gu Qingye. Without caring about Gu Qingye's personality or how difficult it was to get along with him, she immediately handed the task of bringing Feng Qing to the director's office to Gu Qingye and rushed to the school infirmary. Before Feng Qing could say anything, Instructor Bai had already left. Gu Qingye came over. What the heck? Are you really a freshman from the music school? Instructor Bai really knows how to find trouble for me. Isn't she afraid that I'll sell you off if she hands you over to me? Gu Qingye pulled the tie on his neck and spoke in a domineering tone. He glanced at the student record in Feng Qing's hands and bent down to size her up. There were even guiding dogs among the freshmen this year. March, who was beside Feng Qing, glared at Gu Qingye when she heard the person's bad tone. I can go to the director's office myself. Feng Qing was already used to these unkind words, so she didn't need this person to bring her along. Don't. Instructor Bai said that I have to take care of my new classmate. I'll bring you there. I want to see how that old fellow he Su recruits new students. Even a blind person can learn music. Hurry up and leave. You want me to lead you. But the dog doesn't bite, right? Gu Qingye mocked. With such a blind person in school, this boring university life had become interesting. In the dean's office on the fourth floor of the music academy. Gu Qingye raised his hand and was about to push the door open. He had no habit of knocking at all. However, he thought of the little blind man beside him and said to Feng Qing, seeing how pitiful you are, let me remind you. When I came out of the director's office, Chief Shen came over. She should be the one who wants to see you. That old woman is not to be trifled with. Be careful, before Feng Qing could say anything, the office door opened and a middle-aged man's voice sounded. Gu Qingye, watch your words. Chapter 17 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Who's going to substitute for the freshman speech? Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations The middle aged man walked towards Feng Qing and said in a friendly tone, I'm He Su, the dean of the music school. I was about to pick you up. Come in, don't listen to Gu Qingye's nonsense. Chief Shen wanted to know about your situation after knowing about it, so we informed you to come over. He Su glared at Gu Qingye and walked away. He did not reach out to help Feng Qing because he knew that a child like her needed normal communication and not sympathy. He Su, the dean of the School of Music, was 45 years old. He was a top classical music artist and was famous for his eru. Dot he pounced on Gu Qingye again and said, Student Feng Qing is very good. Her major is the violin. Although she's not physically convenient, she's involved in many classical instruments. I think if your eyes don't need it, you can donate it to someone who needs it. Of course, they might not like it. He Su lashed out at Gu Qingye. A brat like Gu Qingye couldn't be spoiled. If it wasn't because of his parents, he Su wouldn't fancy such a child no matter how smart he was. Without waiting for Gu Qingye to say anything, he Su turned around and said to Feng Qing, Gu Qingye just has a bad mouth, but he's actually good at heart. He didn't say that to you on purpose. Then, he led Feng Qing to the office and looked at the middle aged woman waiting inside. Chief Shen, sorry to keep you waiting. This is the special admission student I told you about. Shen Suying was dressed in a standard black business suit. Her hair was tied up and she looked like she was in her thirties. She looked at Feng Qing impatiently, holding Feng Qing's file in her hand. She had seen countless students, especially in the capital's top university. In this top university in the capital, everyone looked at each other with their eyes on their head. None of the students' files were like Feng Qing's, complicated and unpresentable. From a poor mountain district, her primary school results had always been number one. 
she was also number one in junior high school. However, after leaving the mountains, her high school results were a tragic sight. She was forced to drop out of school because she beat her teacher. Jiangdu's number one high school was the best high school in Jiangdu. How did she study after she got in? She was also forced to drop out of school because of her zero grades and fights. Shen Suying felt a headache coming up. Could it be that her personality changed drastically after she became blind? It was just that this blindness did not match the time written on it. If she was blind in high school, how did she pass the examination? She was even more curious about how Feng Qing got into the capital university. When she found out that the music academy had recruited such a person this year, she immediately went to Dean He, claiming that she wanted to know more about her new student, but in reality, she just wanted to get rid of this tumor. How could the number one university in the capital city have such a student dragging them down? It would simply affect the school's reputation. She herself was from the admissions office, and she didn't even know how this student managed to get in. Feng Qing's existence was a major mistake in her work. Student Feng Qing, can you tell me how you got into the capital's number one university? Did you rely on your guide dog to lead the way? Not just anyone can enter here. Shen Suying did not care what He Su was trying to do to her. She asked sharply. The capital university chose me. Feng Qing's voice was sweet and affirmative. Ha ha. What did I hear? Dean He, could this be the ancestor invited by the school? Shen Suying could not hide her contempt at all. Her voice became shrill. Maybe. Feng Qing replied with a smile. Wasn't she the little ancestor of Xie Jiuhan? As for her, if the small gangsters in a dark organization found out that she was only a freshman in her twenties, she would definitely be laughed at by them. In that organization, everyone's IQ was above 180, so it was impossible for an over.age student like her to appear. Yu, Shen Suying pointed at Feng Qing and was speechless. She hated women with outstanding looks the most in her life. Feng Qing was the most eye-dot-catching woman she had ever seen. She already had a bad impression of her, and now that she was being humiliated, she looked at Feng Qing with even more disgust. At the entrance of the director's office, Gu Qingye, who was standing there casually, tried to hold back his laughter. If Feng Qing had not been blind, he really wanted to give her a thumbs up. Shen Suying, this old virgin, was so angry that she could not speak. What a talent! During the military training, this old woman had been targeting pretty girls and was very strict. The pretty girls complained one after another. Wasn't it just her fiancé who ran away with a young lady in her early years? After they got married, her husband cheated on her with a young lady who was ten years younger than her. Was there a need to pick on someone who was good.looking? Which man didn't like young ladies? Suddenly, Dean He Su's phone rang. He Su picked up his phone and turned around to answer the call. Then, he frowned. What happened? Feng Jianning's head is injured. Are you sure she can't go on stage? All right, I understand. Let her have a good rest. Don't feel pressured. He Su put down the phone and looked at the few people in the room. He did not continue the topic of Feng Qing. The matter of the new student's speech was obviously more important now. He briefly talked to Chief Shen, and the two of them fell silent. Shen Suying frowned. She's too careless. It's just that at this time, who would replace her? Chapter 18 You are listening at NovelFull.audio I'm looking forward to it translator. Henyi Translations Editor Henyi translations He Su heard Shen Suying's words and suddenly turned to look at Gu Qingye who was standing at the door and watching the fun. Gu Qingye's appearance and professional results were actually very suitable to be the representative of the freshman. I can be the representative too. I will let everyone have a good time. Gu Qingye noticed He Su's gaze and adjusted his tie and acted like he was another modest young master. However, this guy was a wolf in sheep's clothing. 
On the first day of military training, he had brought a large group of students to dance. He almost went on the current news. He Su gave up on the idea. Director, I have a suggestion. Let's use student Feng Qing as a substitute. Our school only has one special admissions student like her. I believe the students will be greatly moved by her speech, which represents the freshmen. Shen Suying's eyes were filled with evil intentions. That's not appropriate. Chief Shen, watch your words. There's a big shot here today, how can you mess around? He Su looked at Shen Suying disapprovingly. This Chief Shen, other than her harsh words, she was very strict in other areas. Dot, Dean He, how is this nonsense? I think she's the most suitable candidate to represent us. Otherwise, all the students would not be hardworking. Student Feng Qing hasn't even taken the college entrance examination yet, and her body is in such a state. How can she come to school? She has to prove herself. Otherwise, how can she be fair to the other students? Besides, there's still half an hour left. Where can I find someone as suitable as student Feng Qing? Just nice, I still have student Feng Jianning's video speech from before. Student Feng Qing, listen to it a few times and go on stage in half an hour. I won't make things difficult for you. When the time comes, if you really can't do it, just move your lips. That should be enough, right? We'll settle the rest. Shen Suying looked forward to Feng Qing messing things up so that she would have a reason to chase this blind girl away. Dean, please don't waste any more time. If you continue to hesitate, student Feng Qing will have even less time left. It will be the same as finding other students. Besides, even though Feng Qing can't see, her temperament and appearance are still quite good. Doesn't the freshman representative also represent the school's face? What do you think, student Feng Qing? If you are willing, I can consider the fact that you have contributed to the school and not ask Principal D to withdraw you from the school. After all, your results in the cultural subjects are zero. No matter how I look at it, you are not qualified to stand on the campus of the Capital University. Shen Suying directly said what was on her mind. She did not feel that it was cruel to treat a blind person like this at all. She had held it in for a long time, and no matter how she looked at Feng Qing, she did not like her. Sure, Dean He. If you don't object, I'm willing to be the representative of the freshman. Feng Qing said to He Su. Xie Johan had asked her to come because he wanted her to experience what people her age should have. She also wanted to experience the life of a normal person. It was not like those little monsters in a dark organization. Not everyone in this world was respectful to her. There were also different people. March raised his head and firmly remembered this old woman who had always been rude to his young master. He wanted to go back and complain to his master. Standing at the door, Gu Qingye suddenly walked over to Feng Qing and glanced at March, who was on the ground, before he arrogantly whispered in Feng Qing's ear, I'm looking forward to it, little blind girl. I'm not going to participate in any boring welcoming ceremony, but I'll be looking at you in the first row. Don't disappoint me. Half an hour later, the field of the Capital University was filled with people. The freshmen were beaming with youthful smiles, looking forward to their university life. In the crowd, some girls were stealing glances in the direction of the music school. One of the two boys in the first row was the violin prince. He was already famous as the school bully during military training, Gu Qingye. The other was the medical genius, Xie Shihao. Both of them were the most handsome guys in school. Why are you standing so close? Do you really want to see Feng Jianning? I think she's just average dot looking. She's so unpresentable. How is she good dot looking? Your aesthetic standards have improved, Xie Shihao teased. If you don't speak, no one will think you're mute, Gu Qingye ignored him and tugged at his tie. If not for the fact that he was curious about the blind girl, he would not have come over to act like a human. The tie was restraining him and he felt like he was about to die. Before Gu Qingye could finish his words, 
he noticed that the commotion around him had suddenly stopped. He felt that it was a little strange since the principal wasn't here yet. Who could be so intimidating? Chapter 19 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Married, not to touch the opposite gender translator. Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations The man in the crowd actually made the group of love. Struck fools and the group of straight men who were looking forward to Feng Jianning shut up. When Gu Qingye saw who it was, he turned around and patted Xie Shihao. Xie Shihao was stunned. He immediately stopped being impatient and bowed respectfully to the person. Uncle, why, why are you here? Xie Shihao admired and feared his uncle. The leaders of the capital university surrounded Xie Johan and sat down. They were all beaming with joy. Xie Johan's eyes were deep and unfathomable. When he wasn't angry, it was as if he was staring into an abyss, unable to extricate himself from a dream. Dressed in a simple dark blue custom dot made suit, he looked as unfathomable as the universe, making people involuntarily submit to his cold aura. Jiu Han. It's really you. I'm so happy. I thought you wouldn't be invited this year. Shen Suying did not expect that the big shot was really Xie Jiu Han. Her bright smile was completely different from her usual sharp and mean smile. It was as if she was a different person. As she spoke, she prepared to greet him. They were old acquaintances. However, she was stopped by the bodyguards who were clueless. Shen Suying's expression went ugly. I'm married. I don't touch the opposite sex. Xie Johan's voice was cold. However, when he spoke of marriage, there was a hint of affection. Seeing that, Shen Suying's face turned even uglier. Was it because she was a few years older, so she had no chance? Xie Johan no longer paid attention to those who were not related to him. He looked around and did not see the person he was thinking about. His gaze was unfriendly as he asked in a deep voice, All the new students are here. Principal D replied respectfully, Since everyone is here, no one can take leave today. Hearing this, Xie Johan swept his gaze across the room once again. Wherever his gaze landed, men and women would be agitated, and their breathing would become chaotic. Who is the ninth master looking for? Other than his nephew Xie Shihao, who else does he know? Who knows? But the ninth master's eyes are so handsome that you can't close your legs. How can there be a man's eyes that are as mesmerizing as the vast universe? I heard the ninth master say that he's married. What kind of woman could possess the ninth master's vast universe? Little uncle. Little uncle. Are you looking for me? Xie Shihao, who was standing behind Xie Johan, stretched his neck and shook it. He mustered his courage and shouted at Xie Johan with eyes full of admiration. However, Xie Johan still ignored him. Dot, the new students are not all here yet, so there's no need to hold the opening ceremony. The man looked but couldn't find her and spoke directly to the principal. The anger emanating from his body made everyone's hearts tremble. Upon seeing this, Principal D immediately instructed the people below, go and check the number of people immediately and see who is missing. In the crowd, Tang Pan saw that even Shen Suying came down personally to name names. She thought for a while and hurriedly called Feng Jianning. Jianning, how are you? I think you should come over to attend the new student ceremony. At this moment, Feng Jianning's head was wrapped in gauze, and her voice sounded a little weak. I've already applied for leave. I can't go in my current state. Tang Pan pursed her lips. She thought that it was just a cut on the skin and a bit of blood. Why was she pretending to be a princess? However, she still lowered her voice and said, Let me tell you, the famous ninth master is here. He has been looking for someone just now. I feel that his eyes are looking at our music school. I suspect that he is looking for you. You're the current school bell. You've even filmed a movie before, and you're even the designated representative of the freshmen. Who doesn't know you? I heard that the school invited him many times, but he never came. 
In the end, he came this year, Tang Pan was fooling Feng Jianning. She felt that a person like Xie Johan wouldn't watch movies, much less like a flower vase that only knew marketing and had no substance. Feng Jianning had always flaunted that she was the representative of the freshman. Now, because she had fallen down the stairs, she couldn't be the representative anymore. Watching others enter the stage, her heart was filled with anger. She even thought that she should just ignore it. But Tang Pan wouldn't do as she wished. As long as she could make Feng Jianning uncomfortable, she would do anything. Just as she thought that she was about to lose a chance to see Feng Jianning make trouble, she didn't expect to have a new chance. When Feng Jianning heard Tang Pan's words, she said that it was impossible, but she honestly got down from the bed. Since that's the case, all right then. Pan Pan, help me tell the guide that it's already a pity that I can't give a speech. I will still attend the new student ceremony. On the field. Xie Johan, who had not seen Feng Qing the whole time, became more and more irritable. He exuded a low pressure. When Principal Di Zongji saw this, he turned to the dean of the music academy beside him and said, Go, quickly get your new student representative on stage to give a speech. If they didn't hurry, Xie Johan would leave soon. He Su said, Principal D, aren't you the first to give a speech? Chapter 20 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The Murderous Lord Jiu Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations Di Zongji, just do as I say. I'll be the finale. Di Zongji's legs actually felt a little weak. Xie Johan was a little scary right now, so he did not want to go. He Su had no choice but to inform Feng Qing, who was still memorizing the script, to go on stage. He suddenly remembered that Feng Qing couldn't see Xie Johan, so naturally, she wouldn't be nervous or afraid. It might not be the same for the others. After all, no one knew that the guest was actually Xie Johan. They did not know why this big shot was so unpredictable. He had invited him in such a high dot profile manner every year, yet he did not come. This year, he had invited him as usual. Everyone thought that he would not come, but he had come. Next, let's welcome the new student representative to give her speech. As soon as the host finished speaking, Feng Qing walked onto the stage amidst the applause. He Su had already told her the number of steps. The school beauty is here, she really is the school bell in white. She has long legs. Her legs are really white, the sparse applause was basically given by the boys. They all knew that the freshman representative this time was Feng Jianning, and many straight guys were looking forward to it. The boys were far away and couldn't see clearly that the person who came wasn't Feng Jianning but Feng Qing. At that moment, Xie Johan, who was sitting in the front row, released his murderous aura when he heard the commotion behind him. This was no longer just cold air. The principal touched his arm. It was so cold. What was wrong with this person? When Feng Qing stood on the podium, the large screen behind the podium clearly displayed her close dot up. The crowd instantly broke out in cheers. Feng Jianning was just panting heavily when she ran to Tang Pan's side excitedly. She heard the exclamations around her and happily thought that she was recognized even though she was wearing a hat. However, she heard a boy behind her shout, F asterisk CK. Where did this beauty come from? I thought that Feng Jianning was not bad. I didn't expect that she would be even more beautiful. Upon hearing this, Feng Jianning took off her hat that was covering her injuries. She looked up at the big screen and felt as though she was struck by lightning. Was it so cruel to follow her like a shadow? Was she hallucinating again? Why did she see that B asterisk TCH everywhere she went? Feng Qing's face was enlarged on the high dot definition screen. Her skin was so perfect that there was not a single flaw. Her face was as delicate as a little rabbit's, and every frown and smile was endearing. At this moment, Feng Qing still did not know that she was being projected, but she could feel that there were many people below. What made her concerned was that she heard a familiar heartbeat. Why was her Joe here? 
Feng Qin smiled and began to speak in a clear and sweet voice, Dear leaders and teachers, students, hello. I'm a freshman at the music school, Feng Qin, Shen Suying had been waiting below for Feng Qin to be kicked down by the students because of their lip dot reading. She felt that a poor student like Feng Qin was still blind. She was not even worthy of being stained with the mud of the best university in the capital. However, Shen Suying waited for a long time but didn't see the result she wanted to see because Feng Qin didn't use Feng Jianning's script at all. Feng Qin's manuscript was completely different. Where did she copy it from? This was the first thought in Shen Suying's mind. Shen Suying frantically took out her phone to search for the content of Feng Qin's speech, but the results were blank. Her expression was very complicated. It was already very difficult for a blind person to memorize an unfamiliar thousand-character classic in less than half an hour. This blind person could actually do an off-dot script speech. No, this student was not simple. Shen Suying still could not believe that Feng Qin could really do it to such an extent. She could write such an impassioned speech based on what she learned in the mountains. How many students were like this in the mountains? What kind of teaching standard was that? Shen Suying did not even take a fancy to her first place, but Feng Qin in front of her was using her strength to slap her face. Feng Jianning and Tang Pan were even more shocked than Shen Suying. Feng Jianning's legs went soft. At this moment, she felt that she was a fool, and a big one at that. The Feng Qing she saw wasn't a ghost at all. The little slut was really back. It turned out that not only was she not dead, but she was also alive and well. She went to the Capital University and snatched her freshman speech, causing her to fall and break her head. Feng Jianning knew long ago that as long as Feng Qing was still around, she would definitely steal her limelight. She should have known long ago. At this moment, Feng Jianning's eyes turned red. She seemed to have thought of something. She gritted her teeth and quietly disappeared into the crowd. It was laughable. The people who were still looking forward to Feng Jianning's arrival had their attention taken away by Feng Qin. No one even noticed that Feng Jianning had come. Even Tang Pan had forgotten about Feng Jianning beside her. Instead, she looked at Feng Qin under the screen with slightly red eyes. She came back. She didn't die. That was great.